Mom, can I get a grilled cheese? Cause I'm busy, Mom. I have a job. Am I recording? Oh, um, yeah. So what we have, uh, what we have today is 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 my five point four function function notation, um, and it's basically gonna be the same thing as your regular notation for for linear functions. The only difference is that we're doing this thing. Um, it basically just makes everything look a little bit more fancy and we start using different vocabulary words. Um, when I say this, which is how we say f of x, um, f of x is the same as the y in the equation. So we're used to seeing y equals mx plus b. That's going to be the same thing as f of x equals mx plus b. Um, the f really just stands for the function. It represents um, the name of a specific function. Um, and it becomes very helpful when we're graphing multiple functions on one graph. Uh, it helps separate them from each other. I can call one f of x, and I can call another one g of x or h of x. Um, they give you know, a name or, or um, specification to the function. The x part of it represents the independent variable. So together, they say f of x, meaning the function which is using the variable of x within it. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense because if I have a function like, let's say, f of x equals 3x plus 5, this is a function which is using inputs of x and then it'll get out outputs which are function values of the x. Right? So it's the same thing as what we used to talk about before where we had inputs of x and we got out um, outputs of y. Uh, we just want to start thinking about those outputs of y as instead uh, function values um, you know, given the specific equation. So when I go to example one I say that I want to evaluate a function um, this function f of x um, equals negative 4x plus 7 where x equals 2 I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I used to do I want to say though in my notation that f of 2 so now the function where instead of x's I'm putting in 2's equals negative 4 and instead of the x I put 2 plus 7 so the function evaluated at a 2 equals, that's negative 8 plus 7, so the function value at 2 equals negative 1. You see, it's very similar to if I had just y equals this and I wanted to input the x value. I would have said at the end y equals negative 1. Um, but it's important that we start to recognize that we're looking at a function value at a specific x value, the function value at 2 in this case. Right, let's take a look at example two. This time, I'm not solving for x. I'm solving for the function. I'm not solving for um, the function value. I'm solving for the independent variable. So I'm saying I have this different one. Instead of f of x, this one's called h of x. Right, it's just a different name for it. Um, so this is a function h using variables of x, which is 2 thirds x minus 5. And we want to find the value of x when the function value at x is negative 7. So, again, I still just want to substitute this into this function. So, I say h of x equals negative 7. Okay, so this h of x is negative 7. And that's supposed to equal 2 over 3x minus 5. Okay, it's the same thing as if this had said y equals negative 7, and I plugged it in here for the y. Same type of idea, it's just using the function notation. So, what do I do to get x by itself? I have to add 5 to both sides, plus 5, and that gets me negative 2 equals 2 thirds x. And then how do I divide a fraction away from this x value? I multiply by its reciprocal which means both sides are going to get multiplied by 3 over 2. 3 over 2. 
That means on the left side here, I'm just going to bring it all up here. On the left side, I get negative 6 over 2 equals x, and negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. And again, I can check this. I can say, coming back to my original equation, h of 3, negative 3, the function value of negative 3 in the function h should equal <clears throat> 2 thirds x minus uh, minus 5, where if this is h of negative 3, that should be 2 thirds times negative 3 minus 5, h of negative 3 equals 2 thirds times negative 3 is just going to be negative 2, still minus 5, and that equals negative 7, which is what h of x is supposed to equal. Beautiful. All right, so that's how we solve there. Now let's go to our last uh, example like this, where we want to actually graph a function that's written in function notation. Exact same thing as if we were graphing the equation y equals 2x plus 5. But again, I don't want to say a t-chart that has x and y. I want a chart that shows me x versus the function values of x. And it would be the same thing. I could put some inputs in there, 0, 1, 2, 3. And I would get outputs, f of x, so f of 0, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3. And I could plot all those points. But it's a linear function, and I know how to do that pretty easily. I can just go to the y-intercept, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. And I get that from there. And then I use the slope of 2. And I say I'm going to go over and there, over and there, over and there. I have a nice positive slope. It's a good way for me to check and make sure. And then all I have to do is connect it. And maybe if I really want to, just to be extra neat, I can label it f of x. All right, so the graphing isn't any different. The algebra isn't any different. We're just using a different notation. Now let's take a look at this idea of vertical translations. Now, you might have noticed already <clears throat> that something like a y-intercept is a, what is called a vertical translation. The y-intercept takes a specific graph and it moves it up and down. Uh, on the coordinate plane. So let's look at graphing two functions together on the same coordinate plane and how having these different function notations makes it easier to determine which one is which. So let's graph first f of x equals x. So this is a linear function with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. So that should be nice and easy. It's just all like this. Slope of 1. I'm going to connect it now. Beautiful. Now, let's do the next one in green. We'll do g of x equals x minus 3. So this y-intercept is negative 3. The slope still is x or 1. So it's still a nice and easy slope to do. And then I'll connect it. And what do I notice? I notice, first of all, they have the same slope, so their lines are parallel. The next thing I notice is really that this function to this function, every single point has just been pushed down three units. I could pick a point and I could go down three. Here, one, two, three, right to there. Every single point, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. So when I see this y-intercept change when the slope is the same, it's basically just this idea of translating and adding a specific value onto the end. In this case, what was the k value that I added on to the function? My original function was f of x equals x. What, what number did I have to add on in order to shift it down three units? I had to add on a negative three in order to shift it down three units. Say I wanted to shift it up three units. I could say that a new function, h of x, equals x, and instead I would say plus three. And then all these points would be three units and it would be a function that looks just like this one. 
still parallel, but three units up. Now let's look at our last example. The graph shows the number y of miles a helicopter is from its destination x hours on its first flight. Okay, so if I look at this graph, I just look at some key points. Zero hours, it's 300 miles away. At one hour, it's now 200 miles away. At two hours, it's now 100 miles away. And after three hours, it looks like it's back home, zero miles away. On its second flight, the helicopter travels at the same speed, but 50 miles farther. Which statement is true about the graph of the function that represents the second flight? compared to the graph that represents the first flight. So this graph of this second flight, do you think that the slope is going to decrease? That it's not going to be as steep? Like it'll start to go something like this? Do you think that the slope will increase? That instead it will look more steep, like that? That the graph is a translation 50 units down? Or do we think that instead it's more, you know, starts here? It is parallel, but it's down. Or do we think that it's a translation 50 units up? Do you think it starts higher and is parallel? We have four different options there. Two of them you should be able to eliminate pretty easily. I'm really, really curious what you decide for this one, though. Let me uh, check on these when you guys get into class. I want you to try and make a selection on your own. And then uh, I'll come around and I'll, I'll talk to each of you guys individually. All right. Uh, I'm going to go because I need to get that grilled cheese. Um, make sure she cut the corners off because she never remembers to. I'll talk to you guys later. And...